much, Mark and Joe. We'd also like to thank Jeff Dobek, our engineer back at the station. Disco will be up at 11 o'clock. And don't forget that the Huskies going from right to left. As we looked at it, Steve Hall from left to right. And jumping up center will be Howard McNeil versus check out Sinis McNeil. Tied for lead in first half scoring with Dan Calangelo. Both of them had eight points. And McNeil with eight rebounds, two over his uh, season average. Well, it's up in control by the Steve Hall team. Matt Pickenich underneath the McNeil. Thompson left side to Dillon, long jumper by Dillon, switch. Connecticut, down by four, 31 to 27. <clears throat> Dan Calendrillo dribbling the ball on the outside. He's looking to his right, gets it to McNeil. McNeil dribbling the ball around, gets the top of the key to Pickenich. Pickenich looking low. Huskies in a man-to-man defense. Pickenich looking to drive right. He's being guarded tightly by McKay. He's being held up by McKay. Now they get the pass over to Calendrillo. Calendrillo holding up one finger, now going to his left side. He's being guarded by Dillon, trying to get around Dillon, jumping from 20 on the turnaround. No good, rebound tapped up by, underneath by, I believe, Sir John Collins, and he's going to be called for a foul on the play, going over the back of Chuck Alexinis. And for Sir John Collins, that's his fourth foul. He's in desperate foul trouble, and quickly coming off the bench will be Tony Macero to check in for him. Yeah, it's the first, second half foul for the Seton Hall team. So John will take a little breather on the bench, and he doesn't have any points in there for the Pirates. Carl Hobbs controlling the ball for the Huskies. Hobbs over to Dewan. Dewan back to Hobbs. Hobbs jumping from 25. On the night, Hobbs leading all UConn scorers has eight points. Make that ten. My mistake. Pickenich coming across the line. He's being guarded by McKay. He tries to go around McKay. He does on the right side. Pass to the right corner to Calandro. Calandro out to McNeil. 31-29. Huskies losing by two points to the Pirates of Seton Hall. Greco with the ball on the outside. He's being guarded by Hobbs. Pass to the left side to Calandro. Top of the key to McNeil. Turn around jump on whistle on the play. And I believe they're going to call a foul on the Huskies. I believe the final is going to go against number 52, Corny Fanson. And it is. Corny's second final in the evening, and it will be the Huskies first. And on the line to shoot for the Pirates, it's going to be Howard McNeil. McNeil on the ear, shooting from the line, is hitting at a 73% clip coming into this game. He's averaging 14 points a game. Looking for point number 11. And he misses. So, Seton Hall, who shot very well from the foul line in the first half. Coming into this second half, not doing as well. They shot 78% from the foul line. 7 for 9. And that's what has kept them into this game. Second shot is in. And 11 points for McNeil. Huskies quickly inbound the ball. Carl Hobbs pushes the ball up court to McKay. McKay slows things up. Gets it to Hobbs. And the Huskies are going to go right into that offense. 18-20 to go in the game. 32-29. to 29, And Thompson shooting from the top of the key. Bang! 32-31, to 31, the Huskies down by one. Thompson's fourth point of the game. And Seton Hall brings the ball right back. It's Greco on the right side to Calandro. Calandro looking into the corner. He tries to get the ball and does so to Tony Macero. Macero trying to drive. Bounce pass out to McNeil. McNeil left side to Pickenich. Pickenich over to Greco. And Greco out in the top of the key to Calandro. Huskies playing a very good man-to-man defense. Pass to the right side to Macero. Macero out to McNeil. McNeil around to Pickenich. And they're looking to get that ball underneath. But the Huskies just will deny the ball. They will not let it get around. Pass to the right side of Macero. Macero being guarded by Alex Singas. Over to Calandrillo. Calandrillo drives on the lane. Bounce pass to Greco. Greco around Dooley. He takes up one strokes of a shot. Whistle and a foul. And held right there in the play. Corny picks up his third. But it looked like the referee had good position in it. It didn't look like anybody gave the foul. There was a big shot. So Corny Thompson not known to be happy over almost any decision a referee does make. Not too happy again here. And Seton Hall will go to the line one more time. The Huskies are going to move Corny tonight if they expect the progress went off. Good Seton Hall right now with a 32-31 lead. Greco on the line. He misses the first one. It was way short. And Seton Hall not shooting as well from the line in the second half as they had in the first half. 
Connecticut down by one, 32 to 31. They only led once in this game. Greco hits the second one. It's now 33 to 31. 17 minutes and 33 seconds to go in this game. And the crowd trying to boost through the Huskies. Huskies 9-0 looking for win number 10. And right now they're not on the verge of that. Carl Hobbs holding the ball right around midcourt as Seton Hall drops into a 3-2 zone defense. Pass the right side to Doolin. Doolin top of the key down. Sinis, his jumper is short. Rebounded by uh, Seton Hall, but stolen by Carl Hobbs. Hobbs does pass out to McKay. McKay slows it up. Gives to Hobbs, and the Huskies finally come up with an offensive play. Pounce pass underneath to Thompson. Bang! Well, Cordy Thompson, that's his sixth point on the layup, and the Huskies are tied with Seton Hall at 33. Pickenich dribbling the ball. He has some pressure. Bounce pass over to Kyle Jewel. A whistle on the play. And they're going to call a turnover on Seton Hall, and Connecticut will get the ball. Tom Brown checking in case for Tom Pickenich. I did not see that play. I believe they called traveling. Correct you are, that was the call of traveling. And Bill Rafferty, not too happy about that. He's had his jacket on and off all night. It's on right now, but he's yelling and screaming. Down low to Thompson, turn around, jump a bang! Huskies on top for the second time this evening. 35 to 33, they go to Mr. Bread and Butter himself. Eight points for 40 times. And ball stolen by Hobbs. Hobbs coming down, turn spin dribble, pass to the right side, whistle, and a foul called, I believe. And right there, Carl Hobbs, I think, got a little flustered. There was no foul called. He spun around. Callum Villa went down like it was an offensive, but Hobbs was a little flustered, threw the ball out of bounds. Good play by Callum Jewel, even though he didn't draw the offensive. And Seton Hall will try to tie this game up. Pass the left side to Brown. Brown had a wide open baseline, but he slows it up. Gives it out to Greco. Greco to McNeil. And McNeil, who sometimes plays the point guard, finally going in underneath. Gives it back to Greco. Greco over to McNeil. 16-15 to go. Pass it. Callum Jewel, turn around, jump on top of the key. No good. Rebound. Greco underneath. This shot up. No good. Rebound. Fought for still. McNeil hits. Game tied at 35 as McNeil scores his 13th point. And Seton Hall got two offensive rebounds, maybe three on that sequence of plays. And McNeil puts it in. Doolin in the corner looking to shoot the long range. Gives it over to Thompson. Bang! Thompson is hot. 37-35. 40 has scored eight points in the second half. And Connecticut's up by two. Greco getting the ball across half court. He's being guarded by Hobbs. Connecticut's still man to man. Pass left side to Brown. Brown goes out to the top of the key. Chest pass over to Calandro. Calandro sends it down to number 14, Greco. Greco's jumpers up and in. And the game is back tied at 37. And for Greco in the minute, that's his seventh point. Hobbs slowly goes across the timeline and calls out a play. Pass top of the key to Thompson. Right side to McKay. Down low to Alex Sinis. Alex Sinis looks to drive. Gets it out to McKay. And McKay, who's been gun shy all year, passes out and around. And Doolin takes a long jump from 20. And there's a foul fall underneath on the rebound. And it looks like it's going to go against number 50, Big Chuck. And for Chuck, that's his second. The Hessians are going to have to watch the big man, especially 20 with three and Chuck with two. And there's a lot of time left in this ball game. Well, Seton Hall using very good fundamentals down low, boxing out, making the Huskies work for their rebounds. And they really out rebound them in the first half, 19 to 11. I don't think that's been done since Yale in the beginning of the year. Greco dribbling the ball. He's being guarded by Hobbs. He gets a ground him. Hobbs trying to draw the offensive, but he doesn't. And Greco passes the ball over to Calandrillo. Calandrillo guarded by Dewan. Pass the left side to McNeil. McNeil looks to fake, but he fakes out himself. And the referee, and they get a traveling violation called game tied at 37. And when the Huskies are in that tenacious man to man, it looks like Big Chuck's guarding Calandrillo. And they're trying to pull Chuck out to the top of the field, so I another big man underneath. 14 minutes and 50 seconds to go. Bobby Dillon with the ball. Top of the key to Thompson. Thompson looks to shoot. Gets the ball knocked away by Calandrillo. It's on the ground now, and Hobbs comes up with it. As Thompson and Calandrillo both went on the ground, hustling for the play. Hobbs coming back, looking to dish it off to number 30, Bailey, who checked in the game. Bailey has it, tries to go down low. Now he tries to drive, stripped to the ball by Calandrillo, and see it off coming back on a two-on-two. -two. Calandrillo tries to go behind his back and loses the ball. second half foul. Connecticut has three. The game is tied at 37, 14 minutes and 23 seconds to go. And Seton Hall falls back into a 2-3 zone. Hobbs calling up the place. Left side to Bailey. Bailey back to Hobbs. Hobbs now holds the ball up. Looks for Thompson. Gets to Thompson. Thompson back to Hobbs again. And Connecticut really looking to try to get something started. They have not really had any streak going at all. And it's Bailey with the ball on the left side. Back out to Hobbs around the duel on the perimeter. 
into the corner to Chuck Allison, it's 25 feet from the basket, gets it over to Hobbs, Hobbs looking to drag, gets it over to Thompson, top of the key, jumper, in, in, out, rebound underneath by Tom Brown. Brown hands it over to Greco, and Seton Hall is going to slow it up and bring it the other way. Greco dribbling with his left hand, over to Timeout, looking over the left side, he gets it over to Brown, Brown being guarded by Bailey, out top of the key to Calajoro, left side to McNeil, a long jumper, in and out, rebound, Chuck Allison, he almost loses it, but regains control. Alex Sinis over to Hobbs. Hobbs is going to slow it up now. Looks to Perno to see what play he's got to call. He's standing right about the half court line. He finds out what play he's going to make. And he goes towards the right side. Into the corner to Bailey. Bailey, long jumper, swish. Bailey with the jumper on the night for him. He has his six point. Connecticut 39, Seen Hall 37. Got himself to check in as Vernon Driscoll. They're trying to get that outside shooting started, and they're going to bring in Jiskin for that. It's McNeil with the ball on the left side. He's being guarded by Thompson. Lob pass underneath the Brown, the whistle on the play, and Brown is going to be called for pushing off. Jiskin checks in, and Doolin checks out. So two UConn starters are now on the bench, Doolin and McKay. And McKay has just been playing terrible ball. He, has to, he must have lost his confidence by now because he's not shooting well, he's fouling a lot, and he has a lot of turnovers. Well, in the early part of the season, they were telling him that he's got to play smart basketball. Maybe he was a little too cautious in his shot selection. And, of course, uh, he hasn't taken that smart shot. And when he has, he's missed him. He's got down on himself. Connecticut controlling the ball. It's just come on the left side looking to get it underneath. Seton Hall still 2-3. Connecticut not even looking to go underneath, really. They're passing the ball around the perimeter. Hobbs right side to Bailey. Chuck trying to fight for position, and he gets it to Thompson. Thompson dribbles and loses control, and Greco comes up with it. Greco passes over to Callinger. That's 12 and a half minutes ago in the game. Connecticut on top by two. That's the biggest lead of the night for the Huskies, which is quite surprising. Pass on the right side over to Macero. Macero on top of the key to Greco. Greco left side to Brown. Brown passes to McNeil. McNeil over to Macero. Again, Macero to Greco. And they're getting a lot of passes off before they take their shots. And I can see Coach Bill Rafferty saying spread it out. And it looks like they're going to slow this game up just a little bit. Gallandreau trying to drive towards the middle. Pass on the right side to Greco. Greco slows it up looking for McNeil. McNeil tried to break, but he decided to hold up. And he passes over to Macero. Macero top of the key to Greco. Greco being guarded by Hobbs. Hobbs trying to do something on him. Pass to McNeil, top of the key, a right side over to Macero, and Macero throws it up and hands it over to McNeil. 11 minutes, 47 seconds to go. Seton Hall passing the ball around, trying to look for the good shot, trying to get the layup. Greco over to Calandrillo. Calandrillo right around midcourt, guarded by number 12, Vern Jiskin. Spin dribble around Jiskin. He goes toward the middle. A couple Huskies pick him up. He's still driving, and he puts it in. Nice play by Calandrillo on the second effort. On the night, he has 10 points, the second player for the team to hit double figures. Game tied at 39 with 11 minutes and 20 seconds to go, and Connecticut has the ball. Hobbs, bounce pass right, left side to Jiskin. Jiskin back out to Hobbs. Hobbs looks to shoot, left side to Jiskin again, wide over from 20, bang! And for Vernon, that's a six point on the night. Third Gisco hitting from about 15 feet. Connecticut 41, Seton Hall 39. And Seton Hall again taking their time coming across half court. Greco passes back and forth with Calajoro as the Huskies fall back into what it looks to be a 2-3, a 1-2-2 zone. Seton Hall passing back and forth. Referee calling out time. Now Greco gets it, and Greco rolls left side to McNeil. Huskies trying something new for the first time. They're going into the zone. Greco on the right side. Top of the key to McNeil. McNeil gets guarded by Bailey as he comes out in the 1 2 2. Pass the left side to Calandrillo. Back out to McNeil. Back to Calandrillo. And Calandrillo decides, well, let's throw it up. Let's take it out, and let's see what we're going to do here. Calandrillo dribbles to the right side. Gets it over to Greco. Greco looking underneath for a brown. Pass it on the right corner to Macero. Macero hands it over to McNeil. McNeil tries to get the foul, but it's stolen by Huskies. And coming down is just Two on one, just gonna takes it to the basket. He misses, tapped up by Bailey Patton. That ball was knocked away by Thompson, controlled by Jiskum. Jiskum came all the way down, missed the shot, and Bailey picks up his eighth point and listens to the crowd. Time out on the court with 10 minutes and 8 seconds to go in the game. Connecticut 43, seed all 39. Oh, we'll be back right after this. Back here on alumni card, Mark Dwell, Longwood, Harold Bell. And we'd like to thank our engineer, Jeff Goldbach, who's doing a great job back in the studio. With the score, UConn 43, Zane Hall 39. Harold, you got any uh, comments right now? Well, it's a very good decision to go into the zone and try to make Seton Hall shoot from the outside and see if they're going to continue to hit. They're now pressing a man-to-man on the full-court zone, and McNeil gets the ball in, gets it over top uh, to Brown. It's going to be a three-on-one break. Brown looked like he traveled, no call. Gets it 
out to Calandrillo. And Seton Hall will slow it up and again. The Huskies go back into the 1 2 2. Calandrillo passes left side to Griffin. Nine minutes and 53 seconds to go. Huskies up by their biggest margin of the day, 43 to 39. Calandrillo dribbling, passes over to Greco. They're still on the perimeter, way out away from the basket. Left side to McNeil, top of the key to Calandrillo. Calandrillo right side to Greco. Greco thinks about shooting, then passes back to Calandrillo. Calandrillo left side to McNeil. McNeil back out to Calandrillo. Takes up once, jump over the foul line. No good, rebound tapped up. And out of bounds, and it's off. Seton Hall in Connecticut will come up with the ball. Back to an earlier comment coming out of the man to man. Marcelo, 6'8", the 6'8", senior center, was pulling Chuck Alexinis out from underneath, and it was opening up the lane, so Don Turner went into the 3-2. Wow, trying to wake up the Huskies here at the alumni court in the field house of the University of Connecticut. Ball going down low to Thompson, kicked off the foot of Howard McNeil, and it goes out of bounds, so Connecticut will control underneath their own basket. 9-17 to go, only five balls called in the second half. Three on UConn, two on Seton Hall. Wow, pass a shot, bang! Oh! Come to Alex Sinis. And Connecticut on top by six. McNeil coming down the court. Two on three. Jumper off the bet, off the boards for two. And quickly Seton Hall comes right back as the Huskies poor transition on the play. Connecticut 45, Seton Hall 41 exactly. Nine minutes to go. Hobbs across the timeline. Dribbles up, top of the key, left side of Jisco. Jisco looking to go back to Hobbs, and he does so. And Hobbs is slowing things up and looking to go underneath. Left side of Jisco. Jisco fakes shooting. Finds his one shot from 15. No good. Rebound tapped up. Whistle underneath. And they're going to call it, I believe, on Cornelius Thompson. Number four on Corny. That great for the Huskies is Thompson, is their bread and butter man. In the second half, he has nine, excuse me, eight points for the game, and McKay is getting such a check back into the game, and I believe he should be coming in for the big man, and he is. Tony's going to go over and count off and make Michelle, and that's going to hurt the Huskies. He came out and quickly did it, okay? Pickenich checks back into the game, and Matt on the evening has a total of four pickings, and Brown checks out of the game. So we got in the game right now is Calandrillo, Greco, McNeil, Pitlich, and the fifth man is number 24, Tony Marcella. For the Huskies, we got Billy, Jiscom, Hobbs, the three freshmen, and McKay, and Alex Sinis. Seton Hall has the ball. They're in their end of the court. It's McNeil looking to lob it underneath. Gets it out top to Calandrillo, right side to Pitlich. Huskies up by four. Calandrillo, left side to Greco. Greco back to Calandrillo around the perimeter. Pitlich looks to shoot back to Calandrillo. Bounce pass to Pitlich. Jumper from 20. Swish. 45 to 43. Seton Hall cuts the Huskies' lead to two. And for Pickett, his sixth point of the evening. Eight minutes and nine seconds to go in the game. And the Huskies are going to have to start their second half ball club rolling here. They haven't really done much of anything. Thompson on the bench laid in with four fouls. Hobbs at the top of the key. Dribbling around right side to McKay. McKay holding the ball out of his head. Tap to Hobbs. Left side to Justin. Justin dribbles the ball out. Gets it up to Hobbs. Hobbs looking for Alex Innes. Alex Innes posting high and Bailey posting low. It's just going down right side to, to Hobbs. Hobbs forces it to Alex Sinis. Jumper from 15. No good. Tipped up by Justin. And a whistle underneath. And a foul, I believe, called on Norman Bailey. I think that might be Vernon Justin picking that one up. Yes, Vern Justin picks up his third. It was either going to be Bailey or in there side by side right there. But I saw Bailey complaining. I thought maybe it was his foul. Seven minutes and 41 seconds remaining in this game. Connecticut only on top by two. A very shocking incident. See, all you know they had a three-game winning streak. Does not have the height to go with the Huskies. And Huskies coming off a nine-game winning streak. Calandrillo from the left side. Long jumper off the rim. No good. Rebound picked up by Bailey. Huskies looking to slow things up. Just across crosses half court. Gives it over to playmaker Carl Hobbs. Hobbs is looking to do something. 2-3 zone by the Seton Hall Pirates. Hobbs dribbling around, telling Alex Sinis to post down low. Hobbs looking for McKay on the right side, gets it out top of the key to Jiscom. Jiscom looks to drive. Now he pulls up again, gives it out to Hobbs. No penetration by the Huskies. Hobbs left side, bounce pass to Jiscom. Jiscom looking to lob one in, but he gets it out and around. McKay, top of the key, goes underneath to uh, Alex Sinis. His hook is blocked by McNeil, but a whistle and a foul called underneath. And Hobbs is complaining to the ref that it should have been called goaltending. As McNeil who really banged that ball into the ground. McNeil, the human eraser, maybe? Maybe. Holy banana, he went up for that one. 
35 to 43 with six minutes and 57 seconds to go in the game. And now it's finished with the other line to shoot two. And Harold with Mike McKay in the lineup and Cody Thompson on the bench. I don't know if the Huskies aren't playing with a four-man team because Mike McKay doesn't want to play offense. He doesn't want to take the shot. He gets the ball and he sends it back out. And they're losing an option with Corny on the bench. I'm waiting to see when McKay wakes up. Alex Dennis hits his first. But Chuck not having one of his outstanding games, that's only his sixth point. And now they're going to have to go to him in the clutches since, since Corny is on the bench. And Bobby Dillon and Chuck in, and Carl Hobbs will take a breather. So we have Dillon, Jiskin, McKay, Bailey, and the big man from Morris, Connecticut, Chuck Alex Dennis. Chuck looking to shoot his second shot, and he does not put it in. And again, the Huskies having problems from the foul line. They're only on top by three, 46 to 43. And Seton Hall has the ball. Six minutes and 50 seconds to go. The Huskies are going to need a little bit of luck on this one. They're not shooting well at all tonight. Top of the key is Pickenich. Left side to Greco into the corner for Calajoro. Back up to Greco. Pickenich. Right side to McNeil. McNeil back over to Pickenich. Long jumper from 20. Hits short off the rim. Rebound Mike McKay. McKay outlets it over to Jiskum. Jiskum running down the court. Looking to do something. Drives on Pickenich and a foul called on Matt Pickenich. Good play by Jiskum as he wasn't sure whether to slow it up or take it in. And Pickenich picks up his third foul. And Jiskum was in the act of shooting so he'll go to the line to shoot two. Six minutes and 28 seconds to go in the game. Connecticut 46, Seton Hall 43. Connecticut with five team fouls, Seton Hall with four. Just from shooting two. He hits his first. Connecticut one for five from the foul line in the first half. Probably the worst foul shooting of the year. And just hits the second, so now they're three for four coming down the stretch. Connecticut on top by five. Their second biggest margin, 48 to 43, six minutes, 23 seconds ago. Huskies playing a half-court trap. Pass to pick an issue, and they quickly break it, and he gets it over to Calajillo, and Calajillo dribbling, taking over the point guard duties. Pick an right side, into the corner, over to Masero. Masero out to pick it, top of the key to Calajillo, left side to Greco. Greco, top of the key to Calajillo, Huskies, 1-2-2 zone. And Calajillo gets the ball back. Pick an bounce pass down low to Masero, his jumper's off the backboard, no good rebound for Jiskum. Jiskum loses control, regains it, and dribbles up the court. Huskies looking to go out of top by seven. They're going to need this basket. Just go top of the key. Right side, McKay. McKay doesn't even look at the basket. Gives it back to, uh, to just go. Just go on top of the key. Jump up. Bang! The freshman hands his eight point and a timeout on the court. Let's take a break with five minutes and 41 seconds to go. Connecticut 50 and Seton Hall 43. Back here at Alumni Court, 531 left in the ballgame. The Huskies with their biggest lead of the night. The Huskies 50, Satan Hall 43. And for the play by play, a little analysis, I'll use an old pointed phrase. I'll send it over to Harold Dell. That's right, Connecticut up by their biggest margin, 50 to 43. Courtney Thompson still on the bench with four personal fouls. The Huskies will come out with McKay, Alex Finnis, and uh, two more freshmen, Jiskum Bailey. And Bobby Jordan, the other co-captain, Seton Hall's Bill Rafferty wanted to talk it over as he saw his team come up from a, I believe, a four-point lead to now what is a seven-point deficit. I wouldn't be surprised one bit of about around the five-minute, maybe 4.30 mark, we're going to see Corny and Kyle check back into the lineup. And the Huskies are going to work in that last four minutes. Seton Hall has the ball. Connecticut putting on the half-court trap. Kyle Jewell is solely dribbling it across. Connecticut is retreating now. And Calangelo takes the ball easily over half court. Connecticut 2 1 2 zone. Right side to Pickenich. Pickenich holding the ball high above his head, looking underneath, gets it out to Calangelo on the left side. Calangelo around the 28 foot mark, right side to Pickenich. Pickenich again looking underneath, gets it to Calangelo around the perimeter over to Greco. Greco top of the key to Calangelo. Underneath the McNeil, stolen by the Huskies. And coming up with it is Mike McKay. Calangelo forced the pass underneath. And the Huskies come up with the ball. Just go top of the key, right side to McKay, will jump up. McKay hits his fourth point. And finally, McKay took that ball right to the hoop. Pickenich on the right side. Top of the key to Kyle Juro. Kyle Juro looking to drive. Huskies in a 2-1-2. Left side to Greco. Greco top of the key to Kyle Juro. Right side, Pickenich. Underneath to McNeil. McNeil out to Pickenich. Top of the key to Kyle Juro. Right side, Pickenich. Jumper from 20. 
it goes in, 52 to 45. Husky coming back, it's Gordon just crossing the timeline. Looking the other right side, gets to the top of the key, over to Bobby Gordon. Back to Jisco, and bounce pass over to Mike McKay. McKay back to Jisco, Husky's up by seven. Left side to Dewan, Dewan looking underneath for Chuck, but he gets it back to Dewan. Dewan from 25, it's off the rim, no good. Husky's crashed the boards, ball still loose. And coming up with it is Kyle Jewel. left side to Greco, two on two break. Greco top of the key, rebound by, underneath by number 21, Sir John Collins, and he puts it in. And right there, it looks like Norman Bay had the rebound and loss of the Sir John. And there's a timeout on the court. The Huskies want to talk it over. So with four minutes and one second remaining in the game, the score of Connecticut 52, Seton Hall 47. Let's pause for this timeout. Back here live at Alumni Court, Marshall Joe along with Harold Zolk. It's four minutes and one second left in this Big East contest between Seton Hall and the University of Connecticut. And you find leading at 52 47. With just over four minutes left to play. And right, you know, right now you have to say, uh, it might be a different ball game altogether if Daryl Devereaux is in this ball game right now because he's a 13 point average man. You never know. I believe Seton Hall really misses him. Looking at the Big East schedule coming up, Connecticut travels to Boston College on Wednesday and faces St. John's on Saturday. St. John's right now stands with a record of 9 and 2, 2 and 0 in the Big East. Boston College 1 and 1 in the Big East, and I believe their record stands at 8 and 1. So BC having a fine year for themselves. Syracuse falls to 0 and 2 with their loss to the Villanova. Villanova ups its record to. 4 1 for his first year in the Big East, and they were minus Alex Bradley, so Syracuse really coming up with some big problems. And one uh, little statistic the Big East teams recorded a record of 45 and 16 against non conference opponents in December, so the Big East, a very big conference in the country. And of course, you can't overlook Monday night, they travel up to Grand New Hampshire to uh, face the Wildcats up there. And uh, that's a game you can't overlook, although New Hampshire is not known to be a strong basketball powerhouse. This is the kind of game that could upset the Huskies. Of course, we will not be covering that game due to traveling expenses, but we will be at Boston College on Wednesday. Huskies with the ball. They were on top, 52 to 47, 5 point lead. Jiskum streaks down the court. He drives all the way to the basket. He misses a shot. It's tipped in by Jiskum. A great second effort. Huskies on top, 54 to 47, 345 to go in the game. McNeil dribbles across half court, almost stolen by Jiskum again. The freshman is incredible. Low pass down low to Sir John Collins. Collins is, is double teamed, and he quickly gets it out to Calandrillo. Calandrillo right side to Pickenich. Pickenich out of the line of Greco. Greco to Calandrillo. Calandrillo right side to Pickenich. Huskies in a 1 2 2 zone. Calandrillo drives down the middle, throws up a shot, partially blocked, and the Kay comes down with the rebound. Jiskum taking his sweet little old time, crossing half court, past the left side to Doolin, 3.16 to go. Huskies on top by a comfortable seven point margin. Doolin with the ball left side, top of key, Jiskum. Seen well in a 2 3 zone, and Huskies can check the passes out of the line. Underneath by Talent Finnis, and a foul ball. Nice pass by Jiskum as he popped the ball underneath to the big man, and Chuck will go on the line to shoot two shots. And it looks like the foul is going to go against McNeil, number 30. And Tony Thompson getting set to check back into the contest. Foul goes against Sir John Collins. I believe that's number five. We'll wait to see what he says on the board. It's the fifth team foul for Seton Hall. They're correct in that assumption. And uh, checking back into the contest will be Tony Massaro. And he plays uh, Sir John Collins. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Tony Thompson is going to get set to check into the game for Chuck Alexinis. Well, as soon as Chuck is done at the foul line, the Royals will nip me in the tongue there. But uh, the Huskies right now, we've got to be impressed with Vernon Driscoll. He's seeing more and more playing time each contest. And right now he's played about 25 minutes today, and he's got 10 points, and he's looking pretty impressive playing defense as well. Driscoll is a fine ball player. He woke up in the uh, Connecticut Mutual Classic when he hit for 12-12, and since then he's hit only 12 points in the last three games, but he's playing very well as of tonight, 10 points tonight. And now there seems to be a, a bit of discussion on the court. Macero checks in again. I think they tried to check in Brown after they checked in Macero. And the referee says, no, Mr. Macero, you have to stay in. Sir Sean Collins followed out. You checked in, and you will stay in until at least uh, the next buzzer. And Alex Innes is on the line to shoot two. He misses his first. I believe that's the third foul, foul shot Chuck has missed in this game. And that's not like the big man. He is at shooting 74% from the line. He hits his second. 
We shot that to seven point of the night, and you can believe that Don Furnace is going to have these guys burn us at midnight oil at the foul line pretty quickly. We've got a timeout here at alumni. No timeout. Uh, you were full. You were full. 55-37. See, Ralph takes the ball inbounds. Three minutes and three seconds left to easily break Connecticut's press. Calandrillo dribbling the ball out. Huskies pass at a 1 2 2. Bailey at the top. It's Greco. Right side to Calandrillo. He looks to drive. Guarded by Dillon. Right corner to pick it. It's jumping from 20. It's around the rim and it does not go in. Ralph well, topped up. Controlled by McNeil. He misses. McNeil taps it again. Rebound. Thompson. Cornelius shows. His stuff underneath the basket, 55 to 47, a eight, an eight-point Connecticut lead, the biggest margin of the night. Two minutes and 35 seconds to go. Just on the left side, tries to go around Calandrillo, and Calandrillo will be called for the foul. And just go, will not go to the line since it was before the shot, and it's only the 16 foul for Seton Hall. Checking into the game now is Tom Brown. And Brown checks in for Macero. And Calandrillo leading with his third foul. And Connecticut will take the ball underneath the basket. Very just going come upcoming broadcast Wednesday. Andy Young and Bill Healy will be up at Boston College to bring you UConn basketball. The Huskies face the Boston College Eagles. Warren just going to give me the ball, top of the key, bounce pass right side to McKay. It's the first time McKay is in the game this late for a few games. He's not been playing the last 10 minutes of the last couple of games. They've had Bailey in there, but and then he's in the game right now. Dillon dribbling around the perimeter. He gets the ball out to Thompson. Thompson holds the ball up, hands the ball over to Dillon, and Connecticut trying to stall it up a little bit as Seton Hall goes into the man-to-man. Dillon dribbling around. He's being guarded by Greco. Two minutes and three seconds ago. Pass the top of the key to Bailey. Bailey looking underneath. Lob pass to Thompson. Knocked away by Pickenish, but he goes out of bounds and hits the Channel 3 camera. And it will stay the Connecticut's way. Nice ball played by Pippen and Troy Burrow as he hustles the deep corners of the hoop. And Connecticut will take the ball out. Just been calling out a play. He gets it over to Dewan. And Dewan will take over the point guard duties. A minute 55 to go. Two starters on the bench, Alex Innes and Hobbs. And Connecticut on top by eight points. Dewan is still dribbling around. A minute 47. Passes over to Jiskum. Jiskum, 10 points on the game. Playing a fine outstanding ball. He comes from the front. Jiskum driving in on Calajoro. He was far from behind. And will now go to the foul line. Just come on the year shooting 92.3% from that free throw strike. And I believe the foul is going to be against Callan Zero. And that's going to be his fourth. But in the team over the limit, and the Huskies will go to the hands, running on that one and one. The Huskies have been shooting bad awful from the foul line. One for five in the first half. We don't have the second half statistics, but I know Al Singers missed two. And just going to miss his right here, a rebound controlled by McNeil. And the Huskies are not shooting very well as they usually do. Coming down, Calandrillo pass underneath the Pickenish, takes up one, throws up a shot, rebound, Thompson. Thompson almost fouled Pickenish on the play, but used his body nicely and came up with the rebound, 55 to 47, a minute 20 to go in the game. Just going to dribble across half court. Being guarded by Calandrillo, drives on the right side, throws up a shot blocked nicely by number 23, Tom Brown, and it will stay to Connecticut's way as it goes out of bounds. But Connecticut looks like they have this game wrapped up. An eight-point lead with a minute 17 to go in the ball. Ball inbounded to Thompson. Thompson at the foul line. Cross-court pass to Dewan, and Dewan will slow it up, wait for Greco to come out and guard him, and try to attract the foul. Dewan shooting very well from the foul line himself, 85%. Pass the right corner to McKay. McKay's the man to foul if you want to foul anybody. This one at Ethan and on Thompson, and that's his fifth, an offensive foul called behind the scenes. I guess they called a moving kick on the man, or an elbow. And sit down, Corey, that's the game for you, but they're going to give him a fine hand as he scored 10 points, coming up with 8 in the second half to start UConn rolling. And a few clutch rebounds to mention in there also. One minute and five seconds to go in the game. Seton Hall will take control of the ball. UConn is sending in to the game Bruce Kaczynski, who's not seen any time in the second half. In the first half, he was one for one from the floor with two points. And Bruce cannot be very happy with the playing time. He's only been playing three minutes this game. He can't be very happy with the playing time this year as compared to last year. Chuck out since taking a big part of his playing time away. Against Holy Cross, Bruce played, I believe, ten minutes, and he came down with uh, five rebounds. His finest, probably his finest game of the year. Seton Hall with the ball. McNeil, top of the key to Calandrillo. Connecticut 2-1-2. Right side to Pickenich. Pickenich trying to drive around Bailey. Uh, Crowd 
tries to travel, but no call. Calajuro left side, fakes up once, now throws him a shot. Whistle on the play, and they're going to call an offensive foul on Calajuro, and that's the night for him. I guess if you don't know what to call when you blow the whistle, you might as well call it offensive. It looked like an up and down more than anything. I thought it was a foul. He really barreled his way into a Husky. I don't know which one. We'll see who goes to the line. Uh, no doubt about it, he hit him, but before the play, I thought it was an up and down call, and the fans started to boo, and then he apparently threw the offensive. Well, that's number five for Mr. Calandrillo, who finishes up tonight with 12 points, well below his average. McNeil leading the leading, uh, receiving hall scores with 15 points. He's the only one who comes close to his 14-point average. That's not well below Calajuro's average. He's only two points below it. But still an off night for Dan. And Canadian will inbound the ball in front of the press row. 55-47, 48 seconds to go. It looks like the Huskies will win number 10 in a row and look for number 11 in New Hampshire. Bounce pass right corner to Bailey. Bailey fakes up once, throws up a shot. It's an air ball, partially tipped. And the rebound comes out of the hands of Tony Masero. 36 seconds to go in the contest. Pass the right side of McNeil. He crosses half court. Canadian falls back into his own. McNeil tries to get around just now. Having some problems. Top of the key to Greco. Left side to pick it. It's a long jumper. In and out. Rebound. Pull down by Bailey. 22 seconds to go in the game. Just comes slowly going across the floor. He's in the backcourt. Nobody's going to throw the one Norman's prize there. Now he goes to the full court. Pass left side to Bailey. Bailey fakes up 10 seconds to go in the game. And the crowd now starting to pile out. Oh. Goes to Kaczynski. Ah. Top of key to run. Oh. Bang! 3, 2, and the Huskies win the game. Chopping up for the Huskies. Number 10 in a row. The final score. University of Connecticut 57 and Seton Hall 47. We'll be back to wrap up this contest right after these messages. Back here at Alumni Court. And in the final, of course, UConn winning their 10th in a row, 57 47. And right now we're going to go through some unofficial scoring statistics. For the Huskies tonight, the big score was Corny Thompson and Vernon Jiskin. They each came in with 10 points apiece. Corny having 8 points in the second half, but he followed out with just about a minute left in the contest. Mike McKay got his 1,000th point tonight, and uh, that was just 2 or 4 points he had in the night. He came into the night with 998 points. Scored 4 tonight, so he gives him 1,002 on his career now. Carl Hobbs had 10 tonight for the Huskies. Bobby Durin only 2, Bruce Kaczynski 2, Norman Bailey with 8. And Chuck Allison is having an off night with 7. Even scoring down the line, board, but uh, obviously some statistics there that are up to average for some of the Huskies. No, that's quite true. The Huskies had 3 people scoring in double figures from the statistics we have right there. But um, Hobbs is really the spark plug in the first half, 40 times the spark plug in the second half. With a little help from Vern Jiskin when he got late with the fourth foul. And uh, the Huskies, well, put it this way. When you, sometimes when you play bad and you win the game, it might not look too good, but at least you came through with the win. It's like the University of Connecticut soccer team, or when they played Springfield and defeated them 1-0, they played very, very bad. Four games, but they got the win, and a win is a win in this case. They've been playing well pretty much throughout the year. The contests are next week after New Hampshire. We can't look past New Hampshire. It's an away game. Always have problems up in Durham, New Hampshire. But after that, away at Boston College and St. John's at the Hartford Six are two very tough Big East games. And as you said, a W is always a W. You like the wins, and of course, with the Huskies getting all the media hype they've been getting, a 9-0 record and everything, you know, maybe they're just, you know, getting a little excited and things, you know, come out and always play with that basketball. A little extra pressure there, and the Huskies came out and they showed it tonight in the first half. And, of course, for uh, St. Hall tonight, the wrap on them, they had a few players in double figures, and they were led by Howard McNeil. The 6'9", junior, had 15 points, but he couldn't do much in the second half. And Dan Kellen-Jolla had 12 for St. Hall. And then he's going down the line, Matt, he it, Matt picking in for uh, six points. So John Collins could only pick up two. Anthony Macero picked up two. And Steve Greco picked up seven. So that rounded out the scoring unofficially for Satan Hall. And he was Satan Hall, they dropped the five and six, I believe. Yes, Satan Hall goes on the five and six. The Canadian Huskies up their record to a spotless 10-0. Their best record, their second best record in uh, for winning streak from the beginning of the season since 1900, and uh, the best was in 1953-54, I believe it was a 14-game winning streak under Greer, and that's 
Husky's looking to try to get it up to 14. Let me tell you, it's going to be pretty tough. They got some big games. Any final comments, Mark, before we let Jeff Dobek play some rock music until 11 o'clock? Remember, Disco Wolf. I don't know. I'm going to say we can't miss Disco Wolf. I would say a little disappointed with uh, Chuck and Corny tonight. They didn't get the band sides of the big men, and when they did, they didn't really do much. And I'm sure uh, Don Pendle is going to have his guys working on that. And, of course, a win is always a win. And uh, the, probably the big thing that was a surprise was the foul line. The Huskies just didn't shoot that well, but I'm sure they're going to burn some midnight oil between now and Monday. And they'll get that act together, I'm sure in time for St. John's and for Georgetown. All good points, Mark Fugero. Once again, the final score, University of Connecticut Huskies 57, the Seton Hall Pirates 47. Thanks for listening to Connecticut Basketball Action on WHUS. Our next sports broadcast will be Wednesday evening when the Connecticut Husky men's group team faces the Eagles of Boston College from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, airtime at 725. Our next men's basketball broadcast after that will be next Saturday from the Hartford Civic Center when the Husky Hoopsers will play St. John's in their third Big East Conference. Airtime 125. You call Husky Basketball Action on WHUS has been a possible part through generous underwriting grants from Subway Footlong Sandwiches, Nice Trow Incorporated, The Bill Spirit Shop, Husky's Restaurant, Holiday Spirits, Pony's Garage, Cheese and Things, and Rosales Restaurant and Banquet Center. The University of Connecticut Huskies up their record to 10 wins and no losses, 2-0 in the Big East. Seat now falls to 5-6 and 1-2 and and in the Big East. Thanks to our technical director, Jeff Dona, field engineer, Barry Walker, so for Jeff, Barry, and Mark Boudreau, this is Hale Bear City, so long from Alumni Court in Stores, Connecticut. Connecticut basketball is the WHUS Sports presentation. UConn Athletics covered completely, extensively, and exclusively on WHUS Stores, the sound alternative.